And welcome to Take Action News, everybody. David Schuster here. So glad to have you with us on this Saturday, December the 22nd. This is the show where we like to tell you what happened in the world of politics and government and what you can do to influence outcomes. And so we're going to get to it in just a second. But a special thank you to everybody, our affiliates in Chicago and Michigan and Ohio and Oklahoma. And by the way, folks, you can always catch us now live broadcasting on YouTube during the weekend or literally during the week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Take Action News TV, and that way you can have parts of the show sliced and diced and, de and delivered to you in your mailbox. A pretty uh, amazing thing. And also, if you want to see what Daniel Marins, Mitch Molaski, or yours truly looks like during the show, it's always fun to watch. Let's get right to it, though, with the debate over gun control. It was a week ago, Sunday night, President Obama went to Newtown, Connecticut, the home of that massacre in which 20 children were killed by Adam Lanza, who burst into their school with a semi-automatic weapon and two pistols. 20 children killed, six adults killed. Adam Lanza started, of course, by uh, killing his mother that, uh, in, at the beginning of that massacre. The president went to Newtown, and he said he was there not just as a president, but as a parent who was representing the views of so many Americans whose hearts were just ripped out by the tragedy. Here's President Obama. Here in Newtown, I come to offer the love and prayers of a nation. I am very mindful that mere words cannot match the depths of your sorrow, nor can they heal your wounded hearts. I can only hope it helps for you to know that you're not alone in your grief. It's a remarkable way to start the speech, the president is showing sort of sympathy and empathy of the entire nation, and then he began to pivot, and then he talked about who we are as a society, and he talked about the responsibility that all of us have towards our children. Listen. This is our first task, caring for our children. It's our first job. If we don't get that right, we don't get anything right. That's how, as a society, we will be judged. If you thought that the president had some anger in his voice, um, you were correct. Even White House aides said that the president was uh, so frustrated to watch the developments unfold, and he wanted some of that anger to be channeled during that speech to try to get the nation to rally, to do sensible things for gun control. He wasn't going to spell it out, but he was going to say, look, it is time for all of us to act. The president, though, set it up in a remarkable fashion. He said, can we really say that we're doing enough to give all of our children in this country the chance they deserve to live out their lives in happiness and with purpose. And he said, I've been reflecting on this for several days, and if we're honest with ourselves, the answer is no, we're not doing enough, and we will have to change. And he said, we're going to have to change, and we're going to have to stop these events, these massacres from happening. We can't tolerate this anymore. These tragedies must end. And to end them, we must change. We will be told that the causes of such violence are complex, and that is true. No single law, no set of laws, can eliminate evil from the world or prevent every senseless act of violence in our society. But that can't be an excuse for inaction. It was uh, fascinating to watch President Obama because then just a couple of days later at the White House, the president formally rolled out his effort, his administration's effort to try and study these issues and come up with a plan, a plan to try to better protect our kids, to better protect all of us from the evils of guns that are in the wrong hands. And again, the president focused on this point that even if gun control, even if making it more difficult for people to get guns will not stop all gun violence, Still, it may stop some of it. Here's the president speaking at the White House with Joe Biden by his side. The fact that we can't prevent every act of violence doesn't mean we can't steadily reduce the violence and prevent the very worst violence. That's why I've asked the vice president to lead an effort that includes members of my cabinet and outside organizations to come up with a set of concrete proposals no later than January, proposals that I then intend to push without delay. 
So what will these proposals be? Well, according to a number of members of the administration and also members of Congress, the things that are likely to get through are a ban on assault weapons, semi-automatic assault weapons, the same ban that was in place when President Clinton was able to pass a gun control law, and then of course that law was allowed to lapse during the Bush administration. They're also looking at a possible limit on the magazine size, these banana clips that can carry 30 rounds, that would be limited. And then there's also the effort to try to close the gun show loophole to make sure that private sellers, which right now in, uh, in many states, 30 some states, if you are a private seller and somebody comes to you wanting to buy a gun, they do not have to show their ID. They don't have to prove who they are. They don't have to undergo any sort of background check. That is something that is likely to change. And then the NRA stepped up. After a week of silence, the, the head of the NRA, Wayne LaPierre, the head of the National Rifle Association, he had a news conference in Washington on Friday, although better to describe it just as a statement because he did not take questions. And in the midst of all of this was some questions about how would the NRA respond to Newtown? How would they respond to these calls for gun control, the efforts by the president to put a commission together to come up with proposals by January? What would Wayne LaPierre say? Well, here was his response. I call on Congress today to act immediately to appropriate whatever is necessary to put armed police officers in every single school in this nation and to do it now to make sure that blanket safety is in place when our kids return to school in January. LaPierre did not say anything about gun control, did not say anything about the president's proposals or what Congress is talking about. Instead, he focused strictly, strictly on bringing more armaments to school, putting police officers, armed police officers in every school across the country. And he said that the National Rifle Association, which has long trained a lot of people about how to use guns and to set up safety systems, he said that the National Rifle Association would be part of this effort to put together a plan. Listen. The NRA is going to bring all its knowledge, all its dedication, and all its resources to develop a model National School Shield Emergency Response Program for every single school in America that wants it. More guns in the schools, armed police officers, Daniel Marins, we already have guns and air marshals on airplanes, we have TSA agents with guns, we've got them at the train stations, why not? Why not take up Wayne LaPierre by having guns in schools in the form of police officers? Uh, I, I, well, um, you know, it. look, on its own, it, it, it sounds like why not, On but when taken to its logical conclusion, it leads us to be living in, in a police state. Um, and, and as we'll hear con our interview with Congressman Yarmouth later on in the show, he said something similar to this effect. Look, schools are not the only place where mass shootings take place in this country. We've had mass shootings now at places of worship. We've had them at, at uh, movie theaters. And so the idea that we're going to solve this problem by putting armed guards in every school is ridiculous. And it's also ridiculous that in, in one of the wealthiest, that it, in the wealthiest country on, on, on the planet right now, we literally need an armed guard in an environment where children are supposed to learn in order to make them safe. Many schools already have them for purposes of security. Obviously, it would be symbolic. They would not be able to stop uh, a shooting from occurring. And we know the, the only real way to stop these shootings is to limit the ability of criminals and, and mentally ill people, or even just regular people, who would sometimes do impulsive things given the chance to not have access to deadly weapons. Well, and that gets to my reaction to Wayne LaPierre. I think that we should take the idea seriously of possibly figuring out how can we better protect our schools, and we should have an honest intellectual debate about whether putting guns and putting police officers in schools is the right way to go. Where I was so infuriated with uh, Wayne LaPierre is that he didn't address anything else that happened over the past week. He didn't say the National Rifle Association extends its deepest sympathy to the victims of this horrific gun violence. He didn't say we're be willing to be partners in this effort to figure out how to keep guns out of the hands of the mentally insane or criminals. He didn't address any of that. And so Mitch Mulaski, I thought the overall take was, sure, he's bringing up one small piece of this as far as how to better protect our schools, but he's missing everything else. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of uh, uh, pro-gun rights uh, advocates, people who want to see more laws in place, who are actually uh, very sort of happy with that statement because it seemed to be very missing the point. And uh, there's a lot of people who are uh, really riled up by this most recent incident to do something about guns in America. And he uh, completely uh, was ignorant of that, seemed to be ignorant of that uh, desire and, you know, didn't really 
you know, we didn't really uh, address anything that, that people really want to be hearing out of the NRA. There's been a lot of, I know I've had friends and other people who've been protesting uh, at the NRA headquarters several times in the past week uh, and really doesn't, did nothing to address these, you know, more systemic issues of, of the violence that, that we see more prevalent because of the guns that are in our society. Absolutely. We're going to continue this conversation about guns uh, later on in the show. Uh, and, of course, as Daniel mentioned at the top of the next hour, we have an interesting interview with Congressman John Yarmuth, a Democrat for, from Kentucky for the last six years, would not say anything about gun control because of the political expedience that gave him. We'll ask him if he wants to stay silent much longer. But coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk specifically about the fiscal cliff. The negotiations broke down again this week. John Boehner seemed to uh, self-implode in terms of a proposal that he had. Where do the negotiations go now? Are we all going to see our taxes go up in January the 1st? You're listening and watching the Take Action News.